It started with language and a natural curiosity about other cultures and other parts of the world. My grandmother was an English teacher and she was a linguist and she inspired me from a young age. She was also a pianist. I had no musical gifts, unfortunately. I studied French and then I studied some Spanish and then I studied Italian, but as I got older, I started to study Russian and then Arabic and then Mandarin. And uh, I don't speak any of them perfectly, but enough to communicate a little bit with people. I didn't know straight away that I wanted to be a journalist, actually. I thought that I wanted to be an actress for many years. I was very involved in theater. And then in my final year of university, I was studying at Yale in the US and 9-11 happened. It suddenly seemed to me of like vital importance to be participating somehow in trying to improve communication and understanding in the world. The other thing that I think people don't always realize is that my male Western counterparts don't have access often to women when they're traveling and doing their work and doing their reporting. And that's 50% of the population of any country that they may have extremely limited access to. In Afghanistan, they would tell me jokingly that I was an honorary man, meaning that you have this kind of sweet spot almost. You have the freedom that a man might have because they understand that while you're a woman, you're not one of their women, you're not really bound by the same cultural restrictions, but you're also still given uh, a certain level of respect or gentleness when you're being dealt with. Confronting people is one of the hardest parts of my job. And it really, nobody prepares you for how hard it is. If you're in the Middle East and I'm a woman and I'm interviewing a, an Islamist leader of some rebel group and calling him a liar or confronting him with a war crime, it's incredibly intimidating moment and you're waiting for the reaction and you don't know what it's going to be. So I do it because we have to, because that is the fundamental duty of the media, I believe, is to ask the questions that the viewer wants to know the answers to. And the only system I've really come up with for, for getting around it or getting through it is to just try to center myself really become very still, very calm, breathe deeply, and just ask the questions. Never raise your voice, never get emotional if you can possibly avoid it, because when you do, you make yourself vulnerable. You have to really be, if you think of it as playing a poker game, you really have to have your poker face on if you're gonna be able to, to pull it off in a way where you don't feel that you're making yourself vulnerable because the natural reaction of someone when they're being confronted is to attack. I would always advise uh, young women never to fear your own ambition. Sometimes there's a sense that it's embarrassing to say, I wanna be this, I wanna go on to do that, I wanna climb the highest mountain, I wanna be the most successful female photographer or whatever it may be. And the reality is never apologize for having big dreams because especially when you're doing something really challenging like reporting in conflict zones, you need to have big dreams. That is what will keep you going. That feeling in your gut that this is something you have to do, that is what is gonna fuel you through the, the toughest times. Any journalist will tell you that so much of what we do, especially in TV, is being in the right place at the right time, and you're there, and this fantastic scene just unfolds around you, and you almost don't need to have any words because the pictures will speak for themselves, the emotion of the people, the words of the people. There's no two ways about it. You can work so hard, but luck is definitely always a factor.